Well, hey, what's going on everybody? Today on the channel, I'm gonna show you how to take a USB flash drive and make it a bootable flash drive in order to install something like macOS 10 Lion. So why would you be able, or I guess, why would you need to be able to do this? Well, I have recently discovered after getting out the old 2011 MacBook Pro, I was going to erase the uh, disc so I could uh, use Lion again. And I came across, uh, when you go into internet recovery, which is what we're in now, and you go to install Lion, and you hit continue, and then you choose, well, you agree to the terms, and then you choose your drive here. You go ahead and pick that. You're gonna notice that you're gonna get this crazy time counter down here. As you can see, world's fastest installation ever. But basically what you're gonna get is an error message pop up that says you're not able to download additional components needed to install Mac OS X Lion. And that is apparently because Apple has shut down the servers that would retrieve that information. So now the only way to install Lion is through a bootable USB drive. So I was kind of freaking out because I was like, oh no, how do I do this? Did I really just mess up my computer forever? But we didn't, it's all good. So here as of 2025, you might find yourself having to do this with other macOS versions as well if you're using the internet recovery tool. And there's that error that I was talking about. So let me show you how to do this. It's really simple. Let's go ahead and jump into it jumped over here onto my other Mac and that is the first thing you're going to need. You're going to need another Mac. So if you're not able to access uh, your current computer because you're trying to go through the internet recovery, well unfortunately you're going to have to get another Mac in order uh, to create one of these bootable USB drives. But if you have another Mac like I do, uh, then the next thing you want to do is, of course, get a USB drive. Now, I recommend doing about 32 gigabytes just so you have plenty of extra space. Um, also, run a little bit quicker and easier if you don't have it um, full completely. But you'll be able to see how big the Lion installer is. I think it's only like 4 to 6 gigabytes. So, really, you might get by with a 16 gig flash drive, but the more space is usually better. So I think 32 is a good rough estimate for you there. The good news is here in 2025, early 2025 I should say, is Apple does have a page on their website and I'll put this link in the description below, but this shows you how to download and install different versions of Mac OS. So uh, if you scroll down, you could see that right here, we can go all the way from High Sierra to Sequoia using the Mac App Store. So if you click on one of these, it'll open the Mac App Store and you'll be able to download the installer from there. If you have an older version, however, from Lion all the way to Sierra, then you'll be able to install um, using the web browser just by downloading the DMG file. Now, if I were you, um, I would probably go ahead and download all of these. I mean, just, just to have them, you know, uh, in case you need them one day because I'm sure Apple is going to delete these at some point soon. Who knows when, but I'm sure they'll go away at some point. And you can see down here how to use a bootable installer. Uh, and you can go through Apple's tutorial on how to do that if you would like. But what you want to do, uh, we're just going to click on the line link right here and it's going to start that download for us. So you can see up here, the Lion one is 4.72 gigabytes. So depending on your internet speed, uh, this could take a little while, but go ahead and get that downloading. Um, and then I'll show you what to do from there. I guess while it's downloading, we can go ahead and actually prep our USB thumb drive here. So go ahead and plug it in. Now it's important to note that everything on this drive is going to have to be deleted in order to create the bootable drive. So if you have something on your uh, drive, be sure to move it off of there, save it in another location. But chances are, if you're doing this, you have probably already cleaned your drive off. So what we're going to do is go into the disk utility 
and disk utility is found in the utilities folder. So basically what disk utility allows us to do is see all of our main drives and everything like that and all of our external drives. So you can see your internal hard drive, your external hard drives down here. And what you want to do on this left hand side is locate that um, USB drive that you just put in. So mine is right here, the SanDisk one. And what we're going to do is simply just select it right here and then we're going to click on erase. Now you can name this whatever you like. I typically just call mine tester or whatever and that's just what I pick. Um, and what you want to do is click here and you're going to do macOS extended journal and you're going to make sure it's on this partition map right here. And you're going to go ahead and click on the erase. Now, like I said, this is going to delete everything on that flash drive, so make sure you didn't have anything important on there. But once this is done, our drive will be ready for the creation of the bootable USB. And there you go. That's all done, ready to go. So we can go ahead and get out of that disk utility. So here is the file. It's all downloaded here. It's on our downloads folder. You're going to go ahead and double click on that, and you're going to see that this window pops up. Now, there is a package file in there, but since we're on a newer version of macOS in order to create this installer, you can see that there's no other files in here. And we can open this file, but we can't actually do anything with it because this is an installer and this cannot run on this particular computer we have. So I believe if you're on an older Mac version, you open this and it would actually um, show all the files that we need right here, but we're gonna have to do a little step here to extract this right here So what we're gonna do is open up our terminal And we're gonna do a couple of terminal commands and we're actually going to create the installer in this terminal as well So the first one I'm gonna copy in here is uh, Basically the extraction. So we're gonna be using the PKG UTIL uh, binary here to actually extract the file. So go ahead and do that and you can see here on the desktop we now have a Lion folder. So if you look in there you can see you have that same package file in the distribution file and also it's going to pop in a couple of other files here. Um, the extraction can kind of take a little bit of time so just give it a moment there. And then there should also be a resources folder, I believe, pop up in here um, at some point. But like I said, you'll just have to give it um, a couple moments. But what we're going to do now in this folder is we are going to head in to install macOS.package. But this time we're going to right click. We're going to click on the show package contents. This is going to bring up this main file here, the install ESD dmg file that is the file that we're going to need in order to um, basically create the installer so that is the one that we want and as you can see the rest of the files have just uh, populated in there but we're going to use one simple terminal command in order to create um, our installer here so let's go back into the terminal and we're going to use this command right here and you're going to hit enter. It's then going to ask for your computer password. So you're going to go ahead and type that in. Okay, one thing that I kind of forgot to mention is you want entitled, untitled to be the name of your uh, installer here for this command. Because as you can see, when you paste it in, untitled right there, it's actually going to rename that for you. Um, so you'll see what that does. But Anyways, uh, basically what you're going to do is put that command in there and it's going to again ask for your password. It's going to say validating and then validating and then it wants to know do you want to erase the contents of that flash drive. You simply type the letter Y and hit enter and now it is going to start that process for you. So um, this could take a little bit of time so be patient. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and wait for this to get done and show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so it's finally done here and you're gonna get this little error down here. Don't worry about that. It's totally fine. 
but you are now able to use your installer. So what we're going to do is get out of the terminal and we're going to go to our installer and as you can see um, I told you I was going to rename it for you um, so that is totally fine but we're going to eject that and let's go over here and see if it actually works okay so we have it plugged in right there and we're going to go ahead and boot up the computer so you want it shut down completely gonna go ahead and boot it up and as soon as we boot it we're gonna hold down the option key and the reason why we do that is this will allow us to choose our boot menu so keep holding that down and as you can see right here we have three options and the one over here on the far right is our USB drive that we just created so you can use the arrow keys to navigate or the cursor but simply navigate over there and hit enter and if this worked correctly we should be able to go into that drive and start the installation process and of course all of our files are already on the bootable usb so that way we don't have to retrieve anything from the internet like internet recovery does that's the main reason why it's not working for us so as you can see it's coming in I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a second it's gonna look very similar of course to what we saw with internet recovery except the main difference of course is the fact that everything we need is already here on this drive so we can go ahead and do that go ahead and hit agree choose your hard drive and we can hit install and this time around, you'll notice that the progress bar is normal looking and it's going ahead and installing. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel on that just because I already have line installed. But as you can see, it does work. So that is how you create a bootable installer here uh, for Mac OS X line. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below. But thank you for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.